Well, I'm going to uh, suggest that you, uh, first of all, open up your Bibles to James chapter 2. Uh, that will be our main text tonight, verses about 10 through 13. We'll be reading that verse throughout the lesson tonight. And uh, there also, for those of you that will be watching this later on, there is a, an outline uh, in the description section on the YouTube page, and you can access that and follow along tonight. The classes that I've been presenting on Wednesday nights for the past few weeks are part of a series that I have entitled The Miracle of Mercy. So far, we've covered the marvel of mercy, the meaning of mercy, the mystery of mercy, and last week, the master of mercy. The sermons up to this point, these classes, have been focused mainly on the mercy that we receive from God, a mercy that is too good to be true, a mercy that goes beyond explanation because it's not there for us to explain, but rather instead to enjoy. A mercy that originated with God, a mercy that belongs to him, and a mercy, as we saw last week, that is the sovereignty of God as we looked at the master of mercy. What I want to do tonight is we're going to switch gears tonight. Uh, before I focused on the mercy that we receive from God, now I want to consider the mercy that we are to give to others. Tonight, I want to talk about the mandate of mercy. That's the title of the lesson tonight, the mandate of mercy. So I hope you have your Bibles open to James chapter 2. We're going to begin tonight in James chapter 2 by reading verses 12 through 13. So here are words from the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, it says, So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy has but one mandate, and that is the level you give is the level you receive. The way that you deal with others when they sin against you is related to the way God will deal with you as you sin against him. If you uh, wish to receive mercy, then you must be a liberal. You must be very generous in doling out that mercy to other people as well. You must give it freely. The reality is that it is very easy for us to receive mercy, and it is very difficult for us to give it to others. When it comes to God's laws, as we look at the Bible, we look at the things that God requires of us. We need him to be liberal. We need him to be uh, compassionate. We need him to be merciful. As we're here in James chapter 2, I read verses 12 through 13. I want to back up now to verse 10. And we're this time going to read verses 10 through 13, or actually 10 through 12. So in verse 10, he says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, this is God, do not commit adultery, he also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Verse 12 says, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So in the way that we talk to others, in the way that we treat others, let's treat them as people who have been liberated by God. This is the first phrase as we look here at verse 12, the first phrase that regulates the mandate of mercy. And that's this phrase, the law of liberty. So I'm going to focus on that right now for the next few minutes. We're going to be talking about the law of liberty. We ourselves, we have fallen short of perfectly keeping God's law. And so who are we then to, when we look at others, to set up our own standards and treat others based upon those standards that we set for them? 
we need to act like we ourselves have been liberated and then treat others as they have been liberated by God. You'll notice in chapter 2, verse 12 here in James, the Bible here is giving us a positive motivation. He is saying, give what you have received. You have enjoyed the blessing of mercy. He says, now share it with others. The law of liberty that set you free should prompt you to set others free as well. Now, if you look at verse 13, we see the negative motivation here in verse 13. He says, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So here we have this law. We think of law usually as something binding, something that uh, restricts us, uh, something that is very restrictive in our activities. And yet we've seen in verse 12 that it was called the law of liberty, a law that God used to set us free. Really, it's the law of Christ. Now, as we look at verse 13, we, we move to our next major phrase. We saw, we saw the law of liberty, and now in verse 13, he talks about this concept called judgment without mercy. Now, this may be hard for us to do, but I want you to try to imagine in your mind the final judgment day, standing before God, standing before the judge of all judges, and there in that hour where God is either going to take us into heaven or send us to hell, he is going to be judging us. And I want you to try to imagine judgment without mercy. That's a very, very frightening thought when you're talking about God, Almighty Judge. Now, the best way that I can try to think of this in my own thinking is a few years ago, actually it's more than a few years ago, I was driving down a road and uh, I was going about 35 or 40 and um, everything seemed to be just normal. I'm driving, I was probably about 40. And uh, there was a police car that pulled up beside me. He's going parallel with me. And then all of a sudden he, I was in the left lane. He came into my lane, passed up at, right in front of me. So he's one car ahead of me. And all of a sudden he started slowing down very slow. So I thought, well, I'm going to maintain my speed. I did a dumb thing. I decided to pass him on the right. Okay. Very slowly. I wasn't, you know, punching it at 90 miles an hour or nothing like that. I pass him up on the right. Well, you might be able to guess what happened. He then pulls in right behind me, turns his sirens on, pulls me over. Now, this is a road that I had traveled very regularly to uh, go to work. And uh, I'd always traveled 40, 35, 40 miles an hour on this road. Well, I sort of missed something because I didn't realize that there was a section of that road where it was a school zone. And so I don't know whether that's, I think the speed limit was maybe 20 for that particular, just a little section there. So that's what he was pulling me over for. I didn't know that. So he pulls up, uh, pulls, uh, you know, comes beside my vehicle. He says, do you know what I pulled you over for? Well, I had to be honest. I said, no, I have no idea why you're pulling me over. I, I didn't say anything like that. I just said, I don't know. He said, you're in a school zone and you're going over 20. Well, guess what? Everybody on that road was going 35 and 40. They always did. They were doing it this day. They were doing it that day. Don't you just hate that when a police officer Pulls, chooses to pull you over when everybody else was doing the very same thing that you were, right? So I even kind of said that. I said, well, you know, uh, um, uh, I, I can't remember what I said. Something to the effect of, uh, yeah, but why'd you pull me over? You know, you, all these other people are going at the same speed. And he says, well, I had to pull somebody over. <laughs> and so uh, he gave me a ticket. Well, I tried to use all the little, um, you know, reasonings that I could to get out of it, like, well, I really wasn't doing anything really bad. I was kind of in a hurry. I didn't hurt anybody. You know, can you give me a break, officer? Absolutely not. Boy, he laid down the law. I think I got a, uh, a ticket for $220 for doing that. And so no mercy at all. I tried everything. I tried to reason with him. Absolutely no mercy. Now, 
when it comes to you needing mercy, you know, you can look at other people sometimes when they need mercy, and you might not be as liberal, but when you need it, boy, you're ready to be very liberal-minded on this. You wouldn't uh, want to think of it when you're in need of it, but when others, what, what about others when they need it? Others need it, are you willing to give it to them? Well, this verse right here in James chapter 2, verse 13, to me, it shoots straight. If it is right, and of course we know it is right, then we need to get serious about this business of mercy. We need to be doing all that we can to forgive others and be kind to all people no matter what they have done against us. Let's look at a couple other verses right now as we talk some more about this. Turn with me over to Matthew chapter 6. I'll give you some time. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 6, a portion of the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, it's the verses that follow what we call the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer. And after Jesus gives that model prayer, in verse 14, he talks about forgiveness and mercy. So this is Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Jesus says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now some of us might just hope that Jesus would have just stopped right there. That's the positive. You forgive, God's going to forgive. But he went on to say in verse 15, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I hope that verse troubles you a little bit, because I think all of us can think of moments in our lives where we were not very forgiving towards someone else. And if we then get serious about this verse, and we take it literally, this is then telling us that God's not going to forgive us either. So it's a very, I mean, there's really not much to say. Our forgiveness from God is dependent upon our forgiving others. Well, if that wasn't enough for you, we're still in Matthew. Go over to chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. This might be a verse that many of us, of course, are familiar with. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, we'll just start at verse 1. Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, the plank is in your own eye. Verse 5, Jesus says, Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Sounds like Jesus has a theme going here. And here it's a little more amplified to show that when we have others wrong us, most of the time it is merely uh, a small matter. And uh, we are trying to remove a speck, a piece of sawdust out of someone else's eye, and yet we have a huge plank in our own eye. If you can do the visual on that, you find a person with this big two-by-four sticking out of an eye, going up to somebody and reaching out and trying to take a speck out of their eye, you can see the two-by-four would be hitting the other person up the head. So not a very pretty sight. But again... This is the reality of judgment without mercy. We need to be merciful toward others. When we focus on someone else's shortcomings, we can't see ourselves. We can't see our own shortcomings. Most of what we see amounts to, as Jesus put it, it amounts to a speck. We thought that it was such a big deal, but the reality is it wasn't. We don't have a clue as to how much each of us have severely disappointed God with our own sin. We don't understand the, 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 the hurt that it brings to the heart of God. He forgave us, and when we don't forgive others, 
Well, Jesus says it right here in verse five, we are a hypocrite. Now, as we think about this, it might be a good time for all of us right now to contemplate whether or not there is someone in your life that you need to forgive right now. Draw up that face, draw up that name. Think about that person that you're being bitter toward, that you haven't forgiven. Might be a good time to really think seriously about that. Someone who, uh, maybe someone you won't speak to, someone uh, you won't greet, someone from which again, there's just bitterness in your heart. And what we need to do is a very difficult thing. We need to like Elsa, we need to let it go. Yes, we need to let it go. And if you don't, Jesus said, or well, James says here in James 2, you're storing up judgment without mercy in the judgment day. Well, let's get to some more good news here now. The last phrase that I want to focus on here in James chapter 2 and verse 13 is this phrase, uh, mercy triumphs over judgment. Boy, doesn't that just have a beautiful sound to it? Mercy triumphs over judgment. This is the victory. We are going to win in the judgment, so let's win with mercy now as we give it to others in this life. Do you know that Satan gets the victory when we withhold mercy from others? And how uh, especially sad it is when he wins with the specks that are in other people's eyes. I mean, small matters that we really should easily forgive others, and we're trying to speak out, take out a speck while there's a plank in our own eye. So let's set the people free in our lives that we've imprisoned within our jails of unforgiveness. Let's be kind to all people before we one day stand in the judgment and that's the biggest thing we're going to need is mercy, a mercy that will triumph in the judgment. Let's, as he says, James says in verse 12, let's so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. This is the mandate that we are faced with today. I want to think about a story that uh, I read about a long time ago. There, there was a uh, Special Olympics being held in Seattle, and there was a race that they were going through, and there were nine participants in the race, and uh, most of them actually were, were females. And there was one little boy who, as he was trying to make it across the finish line, he stumbled, he stumbled and he fell. There were others that were ahead of him, a couple that were behind him, and all of them, even the ones ahead, they all stopped and they all came back. One little girl kissed his knee and they all locked arms, all nine of them, and they went across the finish line. What matters is helping others win, even if it means slowing down and changing our course. Someone once said, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. We need to be candle lighters today. We need to extend mercy to others today. We need it in the judgment, and we need to show it now as we live this life. This is the mandate of mercy. This, you know, think about Jesus himself. You know, Jesus himself, a perfect human being, he is in agony, he is in pain, he's dying on the cross. That would have been the moment in his life when he had every right to be low on mercy, and instead you remember his words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'd like to close tonight by reading from a passage in Luke, in Luke chapter 6. And this is the message of the cross. This is the message of how Jesus wants us to be with our mercy. In Luke chapter 6, and again, this is the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says in verse 36, he says, Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. How merciful? Look at verse 37. He said, Judge not, 
and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Every day you're measuring out grace, forgiveness, mercy to others. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're withholding it. Sometimes you're giving a small or almost no measure. But that's the measure that's going to be measured back to you. That's what Jesus tells us right here. So I think we have a very challenging mandate before us, the mandate of mercy. The fact that if we show mercy, that we will receive mercy in the judgment, that's a pretty good incentive. So uh, we're going to go ahead and close our time together then. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I hope each of you have a very blessed evening.